sector, or there might be someone else who is um, even better suited to answer it if it's about a particular um, subject. So um, if you have any of those questions, feel free to put them in the chat bar. Give people a minute. Okay, so there is a question about the average class size. Our average class size, size across the school is 24 to one. Our, for our middle school grades, um, middle school um, is um, at capacity. Um, we Our cap for middle school is 30. However, um, we do do um, two math groups at each of the middle school grades. So math groups would be smaller. Um, we pair math with religion for this school year. So um, Mr. Weibel has a smaller group for religion as well. Um, classes like PE, health and library are also split into half groups for middle school. Um, so although there are 30 students in eighth grade, for example, they're often in smaller groups of about 15. Uh, Mrs. Fisher, it looks like you have a question about middle school math. Um, pretty much, are the kids ready for geometry or algebra three, four in ninth grade? Um, we work towards that goal. Um, what we do is try to teach to the students strengths and to make sure that they are placed accurately so that they achieve the most success. Um, math placement is really in the hands of the high schools. And in the Catholic high schools, what they do is late April or the beginning of May, they will have at the high school that your child is attending a math placement test. Because really at the beginning of the school year, you're really reviewing a lot. So by the time they take the uh, entrance exam, or some places call it the placement exam. For math, it's not really accurate. And then they end up doing a second exam in late spring to determine the absolute correct placement in the high schools. Some kids do the summer school at the high schools so that if they are in geometry and really want to do um, a higher level honors course or a higher level of the algebra course, then some kids do that and get credit for the math class that they take and then are able to be placed into a higher math. I hope that answers the question. Thank you, Mrs. Fisher. There is a question about if most students attend pre-K at St. Rose prior to starting kindergarten there. From, um, from my understanding of kind of the transition from pre-K to kindergarten, um, not all, all, all of our pre-K goes on to kindergarten and there are usually kids starting at kindergarten who weren't there in pre-K. Um, Mrs. Coonrath, do you have anything to add to that just from your knowledge of kind of that movement from pre-K to kindergarten? Sure. Um, the, the students that start here in pre-K really get a feel for the school and the movement and establish a relationship with teachers and staff. So it makes their transition to kindergarten a lot easier. But that doesn't mean that has to happen. Um, about half of the kindergarten class moves on from pre-K and the other half are new students to the school. So it's pretty balanced. Um, but it's always a bonus to um, start in pre-K and um, move on then with, with your class to kindergarten. 
Wonderful. Thank you. Um, there is a question about um, the offering of sports. St. Rose has a has a partnership with CYO Catholic Youth Organization. Um, so they have different sports that students have access to. Right now it's basketball season. Uh, I think we're just finishing up um, swimming season. Um, so there is a partnership for different um, sports. Is there um, a teacher or perhaps a parent um, parent and teacher on this call who wants to talk about CYO a little bit more? I suppose that should be me considering my husband is the CYO person. I, I was thinking that. There. <laughs> um, so we have CYO swimming and basketball and volleyball we don't have at the school, but often we have had it in the past. Um, it all depends on parent involvement and how much interest there is. So you have to have enough kids in the class, boys and girls who want to play. Starting in third grade and beyond, um, basketball is separated into boys and girls, but in K and one it's together. So it really depends on if there's a parent willing to coach and if um, there's enough interest. But our program is growing and um, that's been really exciting to see. So basketball, swimming, and we've had track in the past, but um, recently track and cross country, we've done partnered with other schools like Madeline or All Saints. Did that answer the question? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, there is a question. What's the balance of group work versus individual? Um, and this is from David Cook, who I believe has a um, next year, third and fifth grader, if I remember correctly. So Miss Deanna, could you maybe take this one? Um, so for, depending on, just kind of the subject or what we're doing, um, how I like to teach just in general for like math and reading and writing. We do like a small mini lesson and then um, together and uh, we do examples with the teacher. And then a lot of times we'll um, pair off the kiddos in pairs and so that they can um, help teach each other. And then from there, I like to um, kind of pull groups for different needs. So like um, if a math group is working on um, something uh, like a higher level than another math group, I might separate those two groups into smaller ones. And then um, they might see me two or three times a week, depending on um, the needs of the math group. And then um, for bigger projects like science and social studies, I do a lot of projects where we're doing partner work or small groups um, so that kids can work on teamwork. I think that's a big thing. And just working together um, for third, fourth, and fifth. I think that's definitely a, a time where you're really growing and learning how to work together. And so I offer that a lot in, um, in my class. Great. Quick answer. The students do not need to attend the one-on-one -on -one, um, virtual meetings with me. I've just been meeting with the parents, but if your child would love to join, that's fine too. There, there's been some kindergartners and pre-K kind of on screen on a couple of them. Um, it looks like Mr. Weibel answered um, Sarah's question about religion. Um, and she said, that sounds great. So I think that one is answered. Um, how much homework do kids have in middle school? Middle school team, does one of you want to take that? Um, the homework depends on how well they're using their time in class. But what we say is anywhere from 60 to 90 minutes most of us do not assign homework on Fridays because we also believe that it's really important that kids have time with family and have some free time away from homework. But there's usually, um, depending on what's going on, almost every night homework in math. Um, longer projects, of course, take longer and you're, so, um, you're not going to see a daily thing happening. Um, we try to help kids with their executive functioning skills about planning things out. And so um, uh, Abby or Connor, do you want to add anything to that? Sure, <clears throat> sure I can add things. Um, for, for my social studies class for the middle school, a lot of the stuff that I do is project-based. Um, so those are, uh, Mrs. Fisher said, I kind of break them down into smaller pieces. Um, so they might have, you know, 
you have to get this part of the assignment done by this day and then the bigger piece um, you know by a few weeks out um, so as long as they're staying to on top of um, the smaller pieces it should all come together um, and for that big project um, so it might range depending on the student um, in the group to maybe 30 uh, to 45 minutes a night on um, for those projects um, but then it'll all come together um, for the big project Wonderful. So there are two questions I think I've seen about kindergarten. So I'm going to try to group those together. Our kindergarten class is capped at 25. Uh, we currently have 20 pre-K students and our pre-K students kind of have that first move over. Uh, our, our enrolled students and families are currently finishing up their re-enrollment. And once they finish that process, we'll have a better idea of how many spots are still remaining for other families eager to join kindergarten or the other classes, because this re-enrollment is happening at all grade levels. Um, so that's kind of finishing up in the next couple of weeks. And then that will give us a better idea. But 25 is where we, we cap kindergarten based on their developmental level. There was also a question about um, the ease to transition. Um, we are planning to do a pre-K and a kindergarten roundup. Um, we did this in August last year based on the needs of um, pandemic, um, but we would either do that in August or in the spring um, based on um, kind of what the guidance of the state is at that time. Uh, we will also do a kindergarten readiness kind of assessment um, in April for those students who are joining the class to give us a better idea where those kindergartners are at as they kind of finish up their pre-K year. Um, as far as the Six, next year's sixth grade class. We're still again waiting for that re-enrollment to finish up, but our current fifth grade has 27 students in it, I believe. Mrs. Groven, is that correct? 27, I think. Yeah, that's correct. Um, the kindergarten, all of our students I'll speak for, um, our K through five students have PE um, three times a week, music two times a week and art one time per week. Um, PE, and, PE and music classes are 30, 30 minutes long and art class is 45 minutes long. So that's con consistent, um, actually pre-K all the way to five has that same kind of pattern. Um, um, Ms. Sand, there's a question about how you go about teaching early reading and writing in kindergarten. And this might also be a good one for Mrs. Paul to add on as well as she works with the kindergartners as well for reading. Let me make sure I'm unmuted. Um, <clears throat> sorry. So kind of starting from the beginning of the year till about December, we were looking at kind of building those foundational skills to making sure like we know our letter names and letter sounds and then making sure we had that foundation. And then we are just starting phonics. So we're starting the CVC words. So the consonant, vowel, consonant. So those words like cat. And kind of last week we started the short A, so the A ah sound. And then this week we're starting the short I, which makes the A sound. And so the way I do it is we do whole group instruction and then we do kind of some, um, kind of work on our own. And then I'll walk around and sometimes Mrs. Paul is in the classroom and my assistant will walk around. And so we're kind of touching base and seeing which students might need a little bit more help. And so we jump in there. And then three times a week, we have uh, reading groups. So either Mrs. Paul might take a group or I'll take a group. And then that's where we meet students where they're at. So some kids might be reading the little book. Some students are reviewing the um some alphabet letters in building words and so kind of just is gearing towards where students are at and trying to help them do you have anything to add mrs paul that was perfect um i just wanted to add that we um our assessment is what drives our instruction so 
we assess the students officially three times a year, but um, kind of more informally a lot more than that because things are always changing, especially in kindergarten. And we wanna make our literacy instruction as individualized as we can. So there's a lot of whole group, but there's also a lot of small group. And I'm lucky enough to be able to work with the kindergarten students as well. So that's been really fun. And collaborating with Ms. Sand has been great this year. Um, and I think only the students benefit from having so many mm -hmm. adults, including our wonderful assistant in your class who are helping with reading groups as well. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Wonderful. The next question asks, um, it says, our children would be transferring to St. Rose from our neighborhood school. Can you talk a bit about the experience of students who are transferring into St. Rose? Um, so, um, is there a teacher who kind of wants to talk about that transition in and, and kind of what that looks like um, when there's kids transferring in from different schools and becoming part of our community? Um, I'll try to take that on. Um, I know that at different points, the parents club has kind of set up where there's a mentor parent or a a, a partner parent that helps kind of navigate, help you navigate through the school. Um, when we have no new kids, we try to make sure that they are feeling included and know they're included and try to meet their needs right where they're at at that time. Um, and all the teachers really work at building the whole idea of family and community within the classroom. So that kids are being supportive and caring towards each other and showing good sportsmanship and kindness. And um, I believe also, I'm not the only teacher in my room. I have uh, 38th graders who also are teachers. Some of them think they are the teacher, but <laughs> um, I think that sometimes my way of communicating might not get the point across, but they can go to one of their friends. And so I believe in a classroom that where you hear is a lot of thinking and going on. And I know that is true of my colleagues, um, Mr. Weibel, Ms. Grow, and Mr. Lane also. So um, we just try to bring them into the fold and make sure that every child knows that they are loved and wanted there at St. Rose. I can also jump in as a parent. Um, I've been here for a while, but my one of my kids had, um, who you happen to know, had um, I think like seven or eight kids enter his class this year. And they, being a parent and a teacher and seeing both, I was so impressed with, within a week, it just felt like they were part of the class and had always been part of the class. So. I think that's something really special about St. Rose is the transfer kids that come in aren't transfer kids anymore. Within a week, they're part of our community and it's like they've always been there. As a brand, as a brand new teacher to the school this year, uh, it's echoing what, what Sarah just said. I can't tell who the new kids are and who's been there a while. Um, one of our sixth graders has the like her class photo from second grade up. And it was interesting to see how many of the kids had been there since second grade and how many of them were new? Because I can't tell. Um, so Sarah is absolutely correct. I also wanted to jump in in the beginning of school for PE, the first three weeks we do um, cooperative team building games and get to know ya icebreaker games. So that's a highlight um, for the kids. And then it, they feel comfortable doing any kind of sport or activity um, with each other because we um, develop those bonds and friendships right off the bat. Wonderful, thanks so much to all the teachers that jumped in on that. Um, the, the next question is, how does the middle school experience differ from the elementary experience? Um, I'll try to, to succinctly say this one. I think the biggest difference is that the middle school model is more of a specialized model. So there is a math specialist, an ELA specialist, a social studies specialist. So our middle schoolers are actually moving throughout 
um, the building um, with guidance and support, um, but they are moving to different teachers rather than um, being with one homeroom teacher for the majority of their day. Um, as students get older, we ask more of them to take on leadership and, and be their best selves. Um, that's all through grades, but even more when they're in eighth grade and everyone's watching their experiences and watching what they're doing even more as the leaders of the school. But that specialized um, teaching model is a little bit different for our middle schoolers. Um, there was a question that came through as a direct message about sacramental prep, St. Rose of Lima Church does have sacramental prep. We encourage families to be part of um, that sacramental prep and have a partnership. Um, as far as how often kids go, um, kids go to mass and attend mass together. Um, in a typical year, we would have um, weekly mass. This year it's on Wednesdays and all kids would attend every week. Right now we're doing a rotation that, um, in levels. So today we had mass and our third, fourth and fifth graders attended live in the church and other students attended virtually in their classrooms. So our, our greatest hope is to be all together again soon in the, in the church and attending mass together. It's really important, but right now um, it's more like once a month live and um, the other weeks um, they're in their classrooms watching. Um, Liz Wells has a question about a June birthday. Liz, um, I can reach out to you by email or if you want to reach out to me by email, maybe we can have a one-on-one -on -one conversation about that because each child is different and I, I am happy to have the conversation, but I just need some more details. Um, how do we support families and students who are not Catholic? Um, is there a teacher who wants to jump in on this one about particular ways that you see, um, you know, different students in your class in this capacity? Um, I think, you know, at St. Rose, we're all learning about the Catholic faith together and um, learning about, you know, things like the virtues and things that are um, really you're able to live out in your daily life and making a difference in the world. And um, I think that, I mean, there's not a big, what do I wanna say? I mean, it's not a big discrepancy or obvious thing or who's Catholic, who's not Catholic. Like we're all just kind of learning together. We're learning about our traditions um, and learning to be just spiritual and um, knowing the Catholic faith faith with it, which, excuse me, is part of our mission, but um, it, you know, it really is just a learning experience with everyone and um, celebrating together and going to mass together. And um, it's just kind of part of the, part of the daily life and the kids um, just grow in faith together. I don't know if I'm making sense, but um I hope that sort of answers the question. I, I, we are a really welcoming and um, inclusive community and it's uh, just an aspect that we all kind of journey on together. And I just wanted to add um, that um, Jesse adds in newsletters, you know, the reason why we do things. So recently, Father Matt came around and blessed all the students with holy water. And then in her weekly newsletter was able to explain the why and then the prayer that went with it. So there's a lot of communication to kind of help um, bridge the gap of those that don't know a little bit of, you know, what happens in the Catholic faith. And then, um, yeah. yeah I'd, just, I'd just like to add from my own experience, when I was in eighth grade, my parents put me uh, in a non-denominational uh, school for eighth through twelfth grade, and uh, um, we were—I was born and raised Catholic, um, and I was the only Catholic in the school. I should have picked that up because no one went to my church, but but I, I didn't pick that up for a couple years, which is I think a testament to the school, right? I was just invited in. I was able to see the great things that they had. Um, I, I learned a lot about the scriptures from them, um, and I uh, made some great lifelong friends. There's another gentleman uh, that said to me one time, you know, I, I 
if I sent my kid to the Jewish school, I wouldn't expect them to make them Jewish, but I would hope they would learn about the Jewish faith and, and know that. And I think that was kind of what Mrs. Blair was saying and, and emphasizing that we want everybody to see the beauty of our faith. Everybody's welcome and invited as much as you want to participate in that. Not everybody has to be Catholic, but we're going to do the best we can to show the best of, of Catholicism here that, that we can do. And uh, I think that's a gift um, that we can offer our, our community. Wonderful. Thanks so much. Um, let's see. There's a question about kin, um, the lunch program and then kindergartners specifically and snack time. Um, we currently, this, this current school year, we do not have a hot lunch program. St. Rose has in the past, um, but given pandemic and just the needs of our community, we um, really focus on um, uh, starting an after or having an aftercare program instead of a hot lunch program, just based on the needs of the community. And um, we don't quite know if we'll have a hot lunch program next year, um, but um, we, stay tuned and we, we're all ha happy to share more. Families have really gotten in the routine of packing cold lunches, but we do know hot lunches are nice for families. Um, kindergartners definitely have a snack time. In fact, pre-K all the way through eighth grade has an opportunity for snack time. They have an opportunity for a morning recess with that snack to run around and get some energy out. And um, all of our students also have a lunch recess. Um, and that is pre-K all the way through eighth grade. So lots of time for to, to have a snack and run around and um, have that social play time. Um, I missed a question that was about volunteer requirements and parent opportunities. I'm going to throw this one over to Mrs. Davidson. Hi, everybody. My name is Shelly Davidson. I'm the Marketing and Communications Director here at St. Rose and also a parent of a third grader and an eighth grader. And pre-pandemic, there were a plethora of opportunities to volunteer both in person and at home. Since the pandemic, the opportunities have slimmed down a little bit, but there's still lots that you can do to support teachers and, you know, help with sometimes correcting assignments, sometimes organizing packets, you know, lots of different in-class things that can be done at home. Um, and we also have an active parents club and they support the school through different kinds of events, you know, like we have a coffee chat with the principal and that's put on by our parents club and there's lots of opportunity to you know, help in event site type situations like that, just sit up a table with coffee and we'll have a coffee outside after uh, drop off one day. Um, we also have bigger events like our Christmas program, which we did under our covered structure last month, and that took a bit more manpower. So there was a morning filled with lots of our parent and grandparent helpers who came to help set up and tear down and um, really huge help there. So it really varies, but hopefully um, one day soon we'll be getting back to more in-person what we're used to in terms of volunteering in the school. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, there is a question about buddy programs between older and younger kiddos at the school. There are um, buddy classrooms, for example, pre-K and seventh grade our buddies. Um, this has been something that hasn't been as um, fruitful uh, during pandemic or possible during pandemic, but we have had opportunities even this year that we were able to make these partnerships. Um, for example, our pre-K students created their own cars like um, out of cardboard boxes and turbo toilet paper boosters and painted them. And our seventh graders um, helped them um, learn stop signs and kind of um, road management by being kind of a path around the, the school block. Um, and it was really exciting for our seventh graders and our pre-K students. Um, I heard that our seventh graders also participated in this activity when they were in pre-K. So it was like a full um, turnaround of participation for those buddy classrooms. Um, is there a teacher who kind of wants to speak to more about these buddy classrooms or something that you've participated in this year or in a previous year?
I can say as a parent that it is a highlight um, for my kids. And when they were the younger kids, it was so exciting when they talked about their buddies. And then now that they're the older kids, they get to be, you know, the, the person that these little kids look up to. And um, it's just such a wonderful program. I think it's a, it's a huge highlight for our school. Uh, Pre-pandemic, the eighth grade was taking on some leadership positions also, so they would help bring in kids from the playground as they were being dropped off, and hopefully that'll be able to happen again uh, when we can all breathe without masks. And um, it's just great watching the kids say, that's my buddy in the hallway, and watching an older kids just kind of, you know, smile like, I'm recognized, I'm known. And so that's just a beautiful thing that can happen um, with the buddy system. I'll add to that. Oops, sorry. Sorry. Go ahead, Linda. Okay. I'll add to that that the buddy program um, really um, builds a community at St. Rose um, between students of different grades. And in, <clears throat> in pre K, the seventh graders are the buddies and um, friendships are developed between students. And it's a, it's a great way for the seventh graders to be playful and it's okay. The, um, and they love it. And we've done gingerbread houses. Uh, we've done making ornaments together. Um, they've done, uh, the second graders write a book and they've read them to the pre-K class. So there's just a lot of opportunities to make learning purposeful and friendships meaningful through the buddy program. I know that the fourth, sorry, Erica, were you gonna? Um, I know that the fourth graders look forward to it. Um, it was within the first week of meeting all the kids, they were asking when they were gonna get their buddy for the first time um, because fourth grade is the year they get to be a buddy. Um, and so, We've done some collaborating this year, Miss Lesh and I, um, and we have pen pals, so they have journals that they switch back and forth. Um, and so first grade will write a letter and then fourth grade writes a letter back. And I have seen more writing in those journals than I've seen um, any other time of the year. So I think it's, it's really beneficial for both, but um, the older kids I get to see and it's, it's just great. Um, the, the other kind of sideline to that is both my daughters went to uh, St. Rose and their buddies still talk about, I remember when Valerie or Molly was my buddy and um, one of my favorite lines from being a buddy was they were learning to know each other and one of the questions was, what's your favorite sport? And my daughter Valerie's buddy said, hair brushing. So... <laughs> It's, it's, it goes beyond the walls at St. Rose as they grow up and they see each other. And I remember when you were my buddy in pre-K or first grade or whatever. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing all of those valuable kind of community part of between those grades. Um, there was questions about um, aftercare. So uh, let me talk, speak a little bit to that. Uh, aftercare was paused, but we do have an aftercare program um, that runs Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. It's through Champions, which is an outside company that comes in um, and, and uh, hosts aftercare. Um, it is an additional cost for families. Uh, we are looking at if we use at champions or if we run our own St. Rose aftercare next year. Um, but, but we are committed to having some kind of aftercare for families because we know it's really important. Um, I think that th that answers all the questions about aftercare. Um, did I miss anything? There was a question about cost for aftercare, Jesse. Is there a cost to the aftercare? Or there is a cost to aftercare and um, um, Liz, I can reach out to you with more specific information about what that looks like this year. So you can just use it as a kind of estimate if that works for you. Um, 
as far as high school, um, most of our students go on to one of the local Catholic high schools. Some go on to their neighborhood um, school, um, but the majority of our students go on to their uh, to one of our local Catholic high schools. Um, we help with that process of applying. We complete uh, um, recommendations and anything needed to support the families in that process. And Mrs. Fisher is a, a wealth of knowledge on that process as well. Um, I think I missed one about teacher tenure and what kind of supports do teachers have. Um, we have one of the lovely things about our staff right now at St. Rose is we have a wide variety of kind of staff backgrounds. We have staff that are brand new to the teaching world, and we have teachers who have been teachers for 20 and 30 years and bring a wealth of knowledge. Um, so we have a blend um, in our building. As far as um, student supports go, um, one of the great things about St. Rose is that at many grade levels, we have assistants within the classrooms um, or for our middle school, there are additional teachers who are teaching those students besides just the homeroom teachers. Um, so for example, um, Mrs. Blair um, is really um, involved in middle school classes um, and Mr. Weibel is a middle school teacher, but doesn't have a homeroom. So they're able to collaborate with each other, um, which I think is a really big support for teachers. Um, is, um, are there more specific kind of ways that you're wondering about supports? Let's see, that was from Eric. Okay, perfect. So there is a question about um, if there's more slots or more applicants than slots. Um, so I think that there is more information about that on our website as well. Um, but we look um, at sibling groups. So if there is a established family. Um, so for example, if there's a third grade student who has a pre-K sibling, um, we would wanna keep that family together um, at St. Rose. So those are kind of the first priorities for us. We look at Catholic families and parishioners of St. Rose School um, as another priority group um, to serve our parish and um, work toward our mission. And then um, we also, want really good fits for St. Rose. So families who really want a strong community, they want engagement, they want to be part of St. Rose. So we're looking at all of that um, as we look at those applicants. Um, we also wanna make sure that we can meet the needs of a particular student. Um, so that is part of our screening and looking at academic records and um, for uh, students in, entering grades two through eight, um, a little bit of a screening process and a visit with the student to make sure it's a good fit for all involved. Um, okay, I made it to the bottom of the list. If there are more questions, we're happy to answer more questions. I am going to put my um, email in the chat bar. Um, I know I have some of your emails because applications have come through, but if I haven't been in contact with you yet and you had a question that you wanna check in about or, or didn't feel comfortable putting in the chat bar, I'm happy to answer all of those questions for you. I appreciate everyone being here this evening and learning more about St. Rose. It really is a wonderful place and space and community and we would love to have you be part of it. Um, all right, we will stay on here if there's anyone who wants to stay on for any, any questions, but have a wonderful evening and we hope to see you soon. Uh, bye. bye, thank you. Thanks.